All right, chat room. So a bunch of crazy ass news came out this past week. I believe uh, London had some kind of show, game show with, I believe, a square. And uh, I guess a bunch of news dropped, which I'm super freaking excited for. As you can tell, today, uh, as of recording this, we have exactly one month until Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out. And I'm super excited, man. Holy shit. But I guess there are some news that came out. So this, this is uh, this news comes to us from Twitter X from uh, I Tai uh, Kimochi Kimochi Desene. Uh, but yeah, it comes to, comes from her uh, Twitter account and she's CEO of I Tai Japan Incorporated, Twitch partner, Insta translate yada yada yada. But as followed by Unaleska, Caleb Hart, and Midgar. So this this could be some actual stuff. Let's see. She says, FF7 Rebirth London event, new info from Hamaguchi and Kitase Q&A. Mm -hmm. All right. Gongaga will be integral part of the story, possibly through Zack. Oh, shit. So chat, if you guys don't know what Gongaga is, Gongaga is where Zack was from. That's where he's born. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember there's a scene from... Um, Crisis Core, the original one. I never played Crisis Core, which I probably should, probably should. But I remember um, Zach was asking Cloud, where are you from? He's like, I'm from New Behind You. He's like, me, Gungaga. <laughs> so uh, that's awesome. Uh, the actual Fort Condor will be in the game, not just a mini game like, the, uh, like in the Intermission DLC. Thank God, because I was actually a little bit hesitant, right? Because um, during the Doofy DLC, you were able to play a mini game, which I freaking love, the mini game of um, Fort Condor. But um, it was like a rumor that if they have it here, they might not have Fort Condor. But thank goodness and thank God, Fort Condor will be in the game, which is freaking awesome. Junun will contain lavish scenes and Cloud will take on the role of ranking officer who needs to build his own parade. You can customize who will be in your parade. Wait, wait. so here's the thing. In the original one, you have to basically, um, you climb up through, uh, what's it called again? Um, the, the port, Port Junon on the bottom, you climb from the bottom all the way up after you beat bottom as well, right? You save that little girl, you give her mouth to, <laughs> you give her mouth to mouth with her dolphin. No, you give her mouth to mouth with Cloud with the assistance of the dolphin, right? After that, um, you take, you take the dolphin all the way up to, um, what's it called again? Uh, Junon, and then you see the high wind. And when you get in there, you sort of get recruited. And this is, of course, this is for people who has not played the game, the game has been out for 21 years, okay? 21 years. All right, so, uh, so, so since the game has been out for that long, I believe that um, it's not considered a spoiler. So once you make it all the way up, you see the high wind and then you get sort of like recruited. It's like, hey, why aren't you in your uniform? Get in uniform. And because there is the, um, the inauguration of Rufus, right? So Rufus gets inaugurated at, uh, at Junon Harbor. And there's the whole song, da, 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 right? That whole song happens. And then you go around and you sort of talk to people in the original one. Now, according to this, maybe you go around and talk to people and recruit them into your parade. That's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be pretty cool to see. Next one. Side quests are available at any time and will not be locked away after progressing to a certain point in the story. Thank God they changed this. It's because in the remake, let's say if you want to go back and do a, uh, a side quest in a rich and final fantasy 7 remake once you progress through a certain time some side quests are locked like you won't be able to do 100 your game like if you're a platinum person right you won't be able 100 your game which sort of sucks but now that side quest can be done at any time that's pretty damn cool and the fact that it's a uh, open world it does really make sense so that's awesome now let's see Red 13 will change his personality after you get to Cosmo Canyon. Ooh, this is a big spoiler for you guys who haven't played this game. So he will have dialogue as Nanaki and as Red 13, allowing for you to go back in chapter select to see different responses too. If you miss some of the side quests before the change. Okay, so spoiler alert. Like I said, 21 years. After going through the whole Cosmo Canyon event, finding out the backstory and everything like that, um, Bugenhagen basically says, um, uh, Hey, Nanaki, uh, you should go with Cloud. It's because, uh, you know, you need to grow and you're still young. You should go with them. 
And he's like, but I want to stay here with you. He's like, just go, you piece of shit. So <laughs> what happened is that Red 13 rejoins uh, Avalanche and Cloud and stuff like that. And, um, but like they sort of know him as a Nanaki. He's like, Nanaki, who is that? It's like, oh, that's my actual name. Red 13 was given to me um, through Shinra and uh, uh, Hojo. So if you can actually go back and like, let's say if you finish all the side quests, like you'll either go back as Nanaki or Red 13. That could be pretty cool. Maybe a uh, double dialect and it, m worth, um, what's it called again? Probably worth a multiple playthrough just, just for this, which is pretty cool. Oh shit, total gameplay is 100 hours if you want 100% the game. With all side quests and mini games, the main story takes about 40 hours. Holy shit, that's insane. Now, I 98% uh, Final Fantasy Remake. In order for you to 100% the game, you have to play it through New Game Plus, right? So if you played through New Game Plus, you, you can go back and get all your um, uh, Miss Materia, if you want to get all the costumes for Cloud, you want to get all the costumes for Tifa, you want to get all the costumes for Aerith, you want to get um, enemy skill, all that shit, all the different items and stuff like that. Yeah, you have to go back and play New Game Plus because there's some stuff in New Game Plus that you that you can't get in regular. And that probably took me around like 70, 80 hours, right? That took me about 70, 80 hours. For this game, the 100% is 100 hours. And main story is 40 hours. I believe the main story for FF7 Remake was probably like 28 to 32. Damn, this game is going to be huge. Right? That's, and this is one tab out of every, everything. Next one. <clears throat> Hamaguchi says in recent interview with French video game YouTuber Julian... I don't know how to say the last name that the Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth Gold Saucer date event and musical that leads up to it will be super extravagant. They also included companion options for the date that were not in the OG FF7. Here's a full translation. Hamaguchi says, we know everyone is very interested in the gondola date event in the uh, at Gold Saucer. The Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth in, uh, Imagining the date scene compared to the OG Final Fantasy VII is quite different. When an intri sorry, with an intricate and dynamic event that starts from the musical play you partake in Loveless. Damn, holy shit. So that means anyone can be in Loveless, not just not just um uh, with Tifa, which I, I usually go with. That's gonna be insane. Since the musical happens before you get to the gondola, we made sure to create something extravagant for this. We also added companions who are not in the original gondola date options. So we think that people will be really happy with what we did with, with the scene when they experience it for themselves. So holy shit, here are here here are some of the excuse me, chat. Some of the actual screenshots. So you get Aerith, which is the, um, the original one I usually get, right? At least for the gondola ride. And then you get Tifa. <laughs> you get Barrett. Okay. Maybe you can explore more on Barrett's background with Dine and uh, Marlene. You get Yuffie. Okay. Her her, her shorts are, buck, uh, are buttoned up, which is good because uh, some of it is not buttoned up and uh, you don't want to go to jail. Yeah, because she's 16 here, chat. She's 16. <laughs> All right. That's wait. There's more. Next one. PlayStation State of Play is on January 31st. That's in two days from now. That's Wednesday. Coincidentally, January 31st, 2024 will be the 27th. Sorry, not 21st. 27th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII. With that, damn, I, I, I'm thinking about 21. It's 27? Jeez. Originally released in Japan the same day back in 1987. New Rebirth trailer and demo. Ooh, it, it will make... A whole lot of sense if if there was a rebirth demo that popped in and whatever you play in the demo will transfer over to the live game which is uh when it comes out which is pretty cool i heard the demo is about 30 minutes if i'm not mistaken all right furthermore Nomura discusses Sephiroth's role in FF7 Rebirth and says because of the various spin-off titles and remake series itself, this has allowed for an evolved and deeper portrayal of Sephiroth, which he thinks will appeal to players even more strongly than before. 
So, um, evolution of, uh, of characters wasn't wasn't a sudden mutation. We've seen gradual changes over several spin-off titles in FF7 Remake itself, and they are evolving even further into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Of all characters, Sephiroth in particular has appeared in multiple different games, with each appearance adding more layers of detail, making him that much deeper as a character. In a certain sense, we are seeing this evolved an in-depth portrayal of Sephiroth as him now returning to his roots to make uh so sorry in the remake series and so naturally his presence will be much deeper and clearer than it was in the original on the other hand the fans have now much a greater knowledge and understanding of Sephiroth so I hope the players can see the characters appeal even more strongly damn that's gonna be crazy right because you are gonna be going to calm and you are going to be going back to Nibelheim to the reactor incident in the, to the Shinra mansion incident right so you'll see before Sephiroth gets all crazy and gets all messed up before he becomes evil you see him who everyone saw him as a hero right because Sephiroth was a war hero of Wu Tai so we we might dive into more of the Wu Tai wars with Yuffie which which would be pretty cool all right next one uh, Kitase says that the story happens underneath the gold saucer at Coral Prison in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a very serious emotional moment. Oh my god, this is what I'm talking about. Dine and Marlene. I might cry, actually. That story is fucking sad. He marvels at the way he can gaze upon the gold saucer from Corel as the OG didn't uh, really give much perspective. Here's the full quote translated. Kitase says the contrast between the gold saucer and Corel located at the bottom of the area as hard, was hard to tell in the original FF7 as it showed up as a separate areas. However, in Rebirth, with the improved graphics, you can actually see how those living in Corel could have gazed up at the gold saucer. It felt real and it was very interesting. Yeah, because back in the day when you play original 7, everything was a fixed camera, right? When you go into Mount Corel area where, where um, well, Barrett like grew up basically, well, basically that's that's where his old town was. Um, you don't actually know that Gold Saucer was connected, which is crazy, right? And then he's like, oh, it's actually go to the Gold Saucer area, and then you go up the fucking trolley, you get the Gold Saucer, and Gold Saucer is massive, right? And it looks really, really tiny. Now I'm super, super excited for how Gold Saucer is gonna look like as well. Oh my god, we're gonna spend 70 million hours there. Let's continue. The stories that happen at Goat Saucer, such as what happens in the bottom of the area in Corel, is actually a very serious story. However, the contrast with the bright and, and light-hearted Goat Saucer with the bottom makes for an interesting aspect as well. There are a lot of mini games, and the Goat Saucer is indeed an area where you can have a lot of fun. Oh fuck. Oh man, this, this scene's gonna hurt, dude. This scene, so you saw this in the trailer. This is dying. Dying looks amazing. And then you see Barrett. And this is Corel right here. Damn! Oh wow! So this is the the thing that leads you up to the. All right, all right, oh, okay. I'm super, super looking forward to this for sure. Now, all right, the last one, which is a random one. Uh, let's, actually, let's come back to this one. This one. This this is from Genki uh, underscore JPN on uh, Twitter X. It says Hamaguchi said they they that they decided to use Unreal Engine four from the start for Rebirth. Hmm, I wonder why. They have access to 5. Let's see what they said. He said, Unreal Engine 5 is attractive, but there is, are still parts in the engine that are still being developed. So instead of waiting for functions, they needed, uh, they decided to develop the functions in-house and use an Unreal Engine 4 to get the game into players' hands faster with a good output. So basically like a, a custom version of... Really? A custom version of Unreal 4. So basically like a boosted like unreal 4 plus <laughs> I, I don't know unreal 4 plus maybe he said that there are different opinions in the team but he felt that it was a point that he could not waver for a rebirth so that's good that, that's good man i'm i'm looking forward to this a lot right to be honest the game can look as good as it can but how does it play how's the story like I don't care how great the game looks anymore, right? It could look cool and everything like that. You can finally see it. You can finally visualize how the game looks, how Rocket Town looks like, how Nibelheim looks like, Shinra Mansion, how freaking uh, Junin Harbor looks like, all of that. 
how the weapons are going to look like. All right. So this is the, all the news that came out. So I'm super, super excited. Um, I'm super hyped for it. We have one more month. Um, in two days, there's going to be a, um, a Sony Direct. Uh, not Sony Direct. Um, Sony State of Play. So hopefully we can see some footage and hopefully a demo. A demo would be pretty cool. Now, the last thing that I saw uh, you got a sneak peek on was news for my favorite Final Fantasy game, Final Fantasy VI. Kitase, uh, Kitase Yoshinori mentions in a recent interview with French video game YouTuber Julian that if Final Fantasy VII Remake Team were to also remake VI, it would probably take twice the time as the volume and the amount of characters is way more than seven. Here's his direct translation. Maybe, maybe. Kitase says, if we were to remake FF7 in the same vein as FF, uh, sorry, FF6 as FF, uh, in the same vein as, as FF7 remake, it might take twice the amount of time uh, it has taken to make seven uh, remake series. The volume we will need to work with is much more than seven and has more party characters too. I believe there are 12 characters, 12, to, I think 12, 12 characters in in uh in six and there are there are two there it, it, it's crazy the story for six is insane uh we will probably need to prepare a lot of things so i can't claim sorry 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 so i can't imagine uh to be uh, to be a task that we have the resources to take on at the moment however many people even within the company have often asked whether we would consider an ff6 remake and although i don't have the answer i am very happy to hear that ff6 remake will be fucking huge look i know people are like oh you should make final fantasy you should remake final fantasy 8 you should remake final fantasy 9 no man final fantasy final fantasy 6 will be the way to go dude holy shit man final fantasy 6 is the way you get uematsu's score you get kitase and nomura get the band back together but hopefully it's gonna be way better oh my god but anyways, with all the news that's coming out for, for Final Fantasy VII, I'm really, really hyped. But this is this is the one that hits hits uh, hits the hardest and makes me very interested. We'll see. I, I'm I'm praying for it. Final Fantasy VII 27th anniversary is on the 31st in two days. Coincidentally, there's also a Sony State of Play that day at 2 p.m. Pacific. If if the demo came out that day, it would be perfect. Oh man, holy crap! This is gonna it's gonna be so good. This this there has to be a, a demo. There has to be um, a trailer for that day. I it, it's it, it just makes so much sense. Holy crap, chat! Oh baby, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready.